Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolor demo. This time using a dash cam image, uh, one of those little uh, webcams, cameras that you can get for your cars as a subject for a painting. So this is a little scene in Saint-Emilion, France. Um, so this is uh, <laughs> this is me reversing out of the car park. Let me just try and uh, speed things along a little bit here. Let's just jump forwards. So with a dash cam, normally they are taking images that uh, they're, they're they're filming in in sort of segments of three minutes roughly, and so I've just. Um, downloaded that onto my PC and just playing it back now. Um, maybe if, if you are, if you do have a dash cam and you look at images and you drive through a, a pretty village, uh, if you take the trouble to look back through those, maybe you do come across some nice scenes, some paintable scenes. So this is Saint Emilion, um, just driving up round the uh, eastern edge of the town. Um, so we'll just, uh, wait for this van to move on. And so I'm looking for typical, ideal painting subjects. Now I have seen this video before. Um, of course I've done the painting already, but just to try and take you through my thought process, um, when selecting a suitable subject. So if I stop about here. This is the first um, choice I have in this little snippet, uh, which is which is quite a nice scene from the point of view of uh, composition. On the left hand side we've got some cars. Uh, in the distance we've got the little mountain top village and then some vineyards. So th this Saint, Saint Emilion is a uh, a big wine growing area, um, very, very big in, in the wine world. And so, of course, we've got to get a vineyard in to portray um, the scene. And a nice curve to the road, a little bit blank on the right hand side. So, you know, I'm thinking, well, what could I maybe put over there to balance the cars on the left? Maybe another car coming down or a lamppost or something suitable. So that, that could, this could be option number one. So just moving along the road, there are a couple of other um, options on this little video. Other potential subjects and one's coming up very shortly. Get ready to push the pause button about now. So um, a street scene left-hand side, right-hand side, uh, you can imagine the sun coming in from the left, uh, the, the, the left-hand building, dark shadows, dark shade on the right-hand side, a nice church steeple in the background, um, the road leading away from us, row of parked cars again. Um, I never shy away from painting cars or a row of parked cars. Maybe we could have some people on the right hand side, sun hitting the right hand side, a few little vertical vertical bands of shade there on the right hand side as well, windows. So that, that that's another possibility. And then we'll just go up the road, we'll go around to the right. So when when you see this you might you might think of other options as well. Um, everyone to their own taste. Maybe that one there might be another one. Again, two sides of the street. You can imagine, this is an overcast day, but you can imagine maybe the sun streaming in from the left hand side, perhaps where that, um, where that side entrance is on that road. Maybe there's a, a shard of light coming across the road there. Um, so introducing a, a bit of a bit of light and shade that might be another option 
and then we get to the top of the town which will be my final option and about now so again left hand side right hand side more people here we could introduce into the composition a few silhouetted shapes as well um, with those figures on the left hand side some some house signs coming out into the into the bright lit sky bit of bit of silhouette silhouetting there as well nice a few nice uh, parasols umbrellas um, a, lot, a lot more things going on in that scene so the scene I decided on the subject I decided on for this watercolor demo is back um, it's about 1 minute 42 1 minute 42 seconds it's like one of these video games now trying to stop it about now there we are um, this is the scene I'm going to do. I'm going to, as I say, it's an overcast day, or quite quite a cloudy day, yet yet bright, um, and imagining the sun coming from the left-hand side. Uh, we do need something on the right-hand side. I'm going to introduce a couple of figures over there, um, somewhere um, sort of a third of the way in from the, the right-hand side. But yeah, it looks like a nice scene and um, let's see how we get on. So the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. This is 300 grams in weight. It's not uh, texture, the medium, medium uh, um, level. So it's not too rough. And it is in imperial size it is 15 inches across by 11 inches down so initial sketch which i do with a soft pencil this is a 3b pencil starting from the left hand side getting in the skyline which is in is deeply contrasted deeply silhouette against the, the brighter sky another nice Thing to have for a watercolor that those um, sharp contrasts so a bit of a jagged abstract skyline to the the, uh, the village there in the background and then sweeping away into the valley it's quite a quite a prominent tower there in the middle and as is the tree in front of it nice round tree And then the left-hand building on the roadside. Good exercise in perspective, this. You're sort of looking up, yet the, the buildings are going slightly away from you. And then a sort of side extension to it, leading into the tree. another some sort of structure underneath the tree now the this is the important bit trying to get the sweep of the road around and towards us starting with the top of the wall which has got a nice little bit of highlight to it Let's see if I can get that in as well and then the base of the wall and the pavement coming around so sort of three three lines there top middle bottom and the gutter the 
just defining the base of the village where the houses stop and the vegetation starts and then some guidelines for the rows of vines in that vineyard there a slight sort of fan shape which again is nice from a composition point of view leading the eye up to from the from the road uh, the the wall the the vineyard then up to the up to the town so cars on the left hand side these row of um, parked cars So I'm always in two minds when, when I've got a car that's in the foreground and it's sort of half on the picture, half off, I always go through my mind, should I include it or exclude it? I mean, I'm including it here um, to try and get some foreground shadows going across just to identify something that's causing a foot that foreground shadow um, there we are a bit of shadow for that smaller car that more distant car um, some kind of bush on the left hand side now people a couple of people so trying to think now their size in relation to anything else that's around them maybe the tops of a car so an average car an average person maybe the height of the car is the same height as someone's shoulders uh, so the head's going to be above the car roughly and then draw in the torso legs just briefly done try and give some sense of movement sometimes I'll understate the legs to help with that movement maybe make them quite thin so if we're doing two figures we want to try and make them look a bit different rather than um, synchronized marching and then thinking about the shadows again coming from the left going along the going along the pavement up the wall and away so I just did a bit of cross hatching for their faces they're coming towards us another decision to make going away or coming towards us so we're nearly done with the initial drawing here So next stage is getting down the first wash. So if I could just run through briefly my palette on the right hand side, the colors I've got um, starting from the top, there's neutral tint. Then coming down, the second one down is burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, uh, viridian green mixed with one of the browns, the burnt umber, it could give, give some nice leafy type colors. Then we've got cobalt turquoise, cer cerulean blue, cobalt blue in the middle, ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, light red, cadmium orange, and then a cad yellow, bright yellow down the bottom. So a fairly brief treatment of the sky. Now I'm using a Raphael soft aqua brush and the side of it I haven't dampened the paper beforehand by the way I'm often asked that do you do you dampen the paper do you stretch it no it's just taped down with some DIY masking tape here and just mixing a sort of cloud color first of all now for a little bit of almost neat cerulean blue and get in a little bit of sky showing through leaving perhaps some gaps 
here and there. Just random. The more you think about it, the less natural it's going to be. So just try and do it as quickly as possible. And don't put too much thought into it. A bit of yellow ochre at the base, which is going to help us with the the background to the far buildings, the town there. So you notice when I when I did the sky, it went over the edges. Uh, that's going to just help perhaps with a few soft edges. Doesn't don't I don't have to follow that line precisely in this first stage. So we're gradually coming down. These buildings, when you try to think about what colour they are, um, particularly this part of France, I think a good combination is yellow ochre and a blue, a light blue, and just mix them all up and see how you get on. And uh, while while you're painting them, while the while the paint's still damp, just go in there and add in a bit more blue maybe just to give it more of that oldie worldy look. As I've as I'm doing here. So the base of the vineyard. I'm gonna paint carefully around those figures which this brush is quite easy to do. You get a, as long as there's not too much paint on the brush, you can get a nice edge, a nice point to it to do some precise work. You could almost do the whole painting with that, with that one brush, because um, it's got such a good point to it. Right, back on those far, far buildings, leave out a few gaps where there might be some windows. Um, now the red of that roof underneath the tree might not be dark enough. I'm trying to get a sort of terracotta type shade here so went in with the bright red. Calm it down a bit with a bit of orange and uh, it will it will, will dry lighter than, than it is there. So uh, see see what that turns out like. Get a bit cooler at the base here. As I did with the figures, paint around the tops of the cars. Now the, coming into the road now, is gonna be more of a cool mix. So I had uh, ultramarine blue there and burnt sienna. Then come across to those figures, go over the legs. Don't want to uh, leave any nasty gaps of white paper there, straight over the legs. And in that middle well, I'm mixing mainly bluish, coolish mixtures. And then the side of this car. Doesn't need to be too precise here, lots of little brush strokes because when you look at the side of a car or windscreen, there's lots of different reflections going on with the curvature of a car, it's catching different things around it. So it's not, very often it's not just a flat, um, a flat colour. Like I did with the houses as we're coming down, just adding in different colours here and there to break it up. Bit of yellow ochre there that was, was uh, splodged onto the pavement. Might leave this wheel 
No, I'd paint over it. Bit darker towards the bottom. And a bit of splattering on the houses while it's all still damp, just so that it's not too flat. Let's pick up that accumulation of paint there. You can, these figures, you can paint over the the right hand side remember that the sun's coming i'm imagining that the sun's coming from the left hand side so um the right hand side of the figures uh slightly in shade and maybe the second figure here some shadows coming over from the first figure Right, let's check everything. Check all the paper that I want to be covered is covered and we've gone to the edges and the corners. So after that first wash, I've allowed everything to dry. That's 100% dry. I used a hairdryer to speed up the process. And we're now ready for the second stage. Going a bit darker. Second stage. The brush I've got here is another mop brush, slightly smaller. It's a Raphael, another Raphael soft aqua brush, medium size. And starting from the left hand side. Again, this one's got a very good sharp edge to it. Do that left hand building. And the base. Left a couple of window windows there. Down to the rooftop of that left hand house, the house that's on the road. And then this prominent middle tower. It's a sort of darker mixture here than I had on the initial wash. A uh, bit of yellow ochre, a blue. Keep mixing it up smudging in with the brush using different angles just to get different textures and intensity of color it's sometimes good to have a smaller brush in this stage because you you're 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 avoiding um laying down lots of flat colors and you're having to constantly because of the lim more limited capacity you're, you're constantly having to go back to your mixing well and mixing mixing something more so now we're coming down to the rooftops of the far 
village. It's quite difficult to make out when you look at the scene where the actual individual houses are. So there's lots of different angular shapes and shadows. And by taking also another benefit of dash cam is that the sometimes the images you, you can alter your settings on the dash cam. I've altered mine to the lowest possible resolution so I can maximize the recording time, but then I don't get all that detail. I think if you're looking at a photograph with too much detail or too high a resolution, that can be confusing and you then get wrapped up in concentrating on, the, on all that detail rather than having a lower quality image, a lower resolution, a smaller image just helps simplify what you're about to attempt. Now down to the base of these, the base of those buildings. Doing a bit of wet in wet here with this darker colour. It's, it's sort of that there's a slight slope on this board, about 10 degrees, 15 degrees or so, so that the colour's just sort of merging up there. And then these final houses at the bottom. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, a classic mix. Probably I, I get through ultramarine blue more than any other color, closely followed by burnt sienna. Well, actually cobalt blue as well. Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, sometimes you always end up being the most expensive ones to repurchase right um quite dark on the horizon with some kind of hedgerow leading away to the right down into the down into the valley I'm leaving little gaps here and there. Maybe giving the impression of a pathway or a road. That's still damp. Good thing about Saunders Waterford watercolour paper is that it does retain the moisture, it stays damp for a long time. So you've got more time to play around with things. It doesn't dry too quickly as it might do with, well, with particularly a, a paper based or, or um, lower quality paper. But then again, you, you may, your style, you may want things to dry quickly. Good also if you're doing a bit of plain air, plain air painting, painting outside. If it's warm weather, you don't want things to dry too quickly. So here I'm thinking about that tower. The, the, the side facing us could be a little bit darker than the left hand side that's facing towards the sun. So I might come back to that.
right second row of houses the houses on the roadside underneath a bit of shadow underneath the roof there and then the right hand edge in shade down to its little extension left a few little gaps there again a few little specks make it dark at the bottom bit of neutral tint there to speed up the process some people frown on using neutral tint or paint gray i don't i think um, in moderation um, and mix it in with something else why not sort of repeating the process for the next building down bit of darkness up in the apex there and then down to another roof A bit dark at the base Now underneath, they we're coming to the base of this tree now, where things will be a little bit darker. It's, that's the sort of area that's going over into the vineyard. I need to, when I get to my greens, I'll come back to that. There's a bit of a line, very faint line that delimits the different levels on that house. A few verticals with some drain pipes or whatever coming down. So let's get in a bit of the, uh, get in with some greens now, which I'm using that bright yellow with a bit of ultramarine blue 
mix it down the bottom there to do the vineyard. So we've got to get in the base screen first of all, then I'll go in when that's dry, I'll go in with some stripes just to give the impression of the, the rows of vines. Carefully follow the top of the wall there. So as I'm painting this vineyard, I'm trying to still follow those lines. And I've got to paint around these these figures again carefully. A bit darker. It goes a bit darker as we go over to the right. So I'll add in a bit of blue. Leave another gap, but join it in a few places. Nearly done with this, just follow that wall around to the right hand side. Add in a bit of blue where it's a little bit darker there. Now this wall and pavement, we'll do this next. A little bit tricky just to keep within those lines. And I do need to keep mixing in different colours as I'm doing this because uh, I noticed the wall was sort of made out of different types of stone, different colours in there. A little bit of a gap between the two figures. See, I've left a bit more of a gap at the top as we've come to the foreground. So a bit more of the road now. I've got my big mop brush again.
introducing different browns and blues follow the line of the gutter as we come down a bit of yellow ochre as well just a few lines there across the pavement just to give us some indication of that curve and distance So next step is some foliage. Now the brush I've got here is an old mop brush with a jagged edge. It's uh, seen better days, but really useful for uh, some rough treatment and uh, making tree type shapes. So I'm making up a green again, green color, bit of yellow, bit of blue. quite dark the um, the trees in this picture so I'll probably add in a quite a bit more blue to it nearly there so there's some trees at the base of that of those buildings on the right hand side which will then lead into the lines of the the vines Still just a little bit damp on the right hand side, that, that green wash I did. And as I'm going over to the right hand side, I'm leaving some little bumps here and there where which will help me to find that, that vineyard again. Um, over to the right, mix in with the right hand houses there. I need to do the other trees now. You can see, probably a bit clearer now, um, this brush. We've got hairs going all over the place. Just helps with a bit more of a, a random treatment. Yeah, it's quite dark on the horizon and to the right of that house. with foliage you've got to with these trees you've got to 
add in again different colors as we're going across mixing it up different intensities different different shades of green thinking again where the sun is coming from and lighter where it hits the sun and darker on the far side so I'm actually mixing a bit of yellow with neutral tint here for a really dark green this should start to when I've done this it should start to transform the picture a bit more starting to give it more of a three-dimensional three um, appearance you can start to see for example there the the sun hitting that roof and this next roof because of the darker darker color behind So I think the right hand side's a little bit dry now, so I can get in the, just testing it there, getting, let's get in the lines of the, the vines. That will help us, helps the composition, those lines and the sense of distance and per perspective as well. So quite a darker green now, bit of that neutral tint mixture in the top there a bit more yellow keep mixing it's quite a dry quite a dry mix this as well not too wet um you can see with the brush i'm, I'm using a small synthetic brush now for this more detail work um they're, they're almost dry brush strokes don't need to be too precise following those lines they get a little bit closer together as we go away Just mess it up a little bit, not be too precise with that. Darker there towards the foreground. Might need a bit more of a shadow. The, the tree that I haven't painted in yet, that's going to be casting a shadow maybe over some of this so I might need to go back in there so this middle tree a lighter green a bit more more of a proportion of yellow in this mixture and just bleeding a little bit with the, the darker green that I put in first of all. 
So as I'm coming over the right hand side, darker. Darker at the base as well. down to the structure at the bottom maybe a few tree trunks there certainly is quite dark underneath there one of the it's one of the darker areas of the picture yeah so I do need to think about some shadows coming across back with the smaller synthetic brush now for some details Shadows underneath the windows, a few distant windows on that tower. I'm just splattering in some clear water here into the foliage. That's also also gives sometimes quite a nice effect to trees if you're doing a big tree area as it's as it's starting to dry. Um, it's still damp. Splattering some water if your board is on if your paper is on a slope. It can give some nice patterns, it needs a bit of practicing. That, um, so the ridge, those buildings, they do need to be a little bit darker, some of those. So I'm just going in again with the, the smaller brush here. And some darker color. As I said, you can't really pick out individual houses on on the low-res picture I had. So I'm just drawing in some verticals and horizontals to give the impression of some distant houses. And then smudge rub out things with a finger top there just to give a, a softer edge these are fairly it's a fairly dry brush now not too much moisture some of the houses they've got Quite a dark gap between them, which I'm emphasizing a little bit now. So 
some windows on the left hand buildings that is all dry now don't actually know what's under that building. It look, looks like some kind of a timber store or something like that. Maybe it was a, a garden shed for the owners. Lots of bits and pieces underneath it. So, bush on the left hand side. Now starting to turn our attention and thoughts about how to render these cars. So, let's define that rooftop first of all with a dark bush behind it, the lights hitting that near car, the, the roof of that near car. Now medium sized mop brush, some kind of a greyish mixture for the cars. And then get quite dark for the shadow underneath the car so this is bleeding up into the body of the car as you can see there traveling up the page quite a dark shadow it will dry a good bit lighter than that And then we've got to do the same to the near car. As I've said, it's always a bit tricky doing these nearby cars. You, you think, how much detail shall I put in? Um, best probably to not put too much detail in and just give the indication of different reflections and lines. We're joining up with that first car. which is generally another good thing to do with a row of parked cars to treat them almost as one shape. I've just noticed that things are a little bit damp down here. So I'm going in with a hairdryer just to quickly speed up the drying. Got a, a nozzle on it just to direct that, that drying. So this will dry a bit lighter than this. And shadows going across the road. If we 
which will be quite dark near the car but going lighter as it goes away maybe something else causing a shadow a twig or a, a post or something bit of red for the brake lights of that car might just bleed just a little bit into that that still damp wash of the car splattering in some water again just to because it's the foreground, I don't want to be too neat and tidy, too precise, and just let just let the watercolour do its own thing. Right, figures starting with the face. I've still got this small synthetic brush. Start with their faces. And then arms left, right, left, right. And then think about what color their clothing will be. Yeah, just needs a bit more water. On that car. So I think that first figure, I'll keep the clothing fairly light just loosely define the legs not too not too much so it's a fairly fairly weak mix here and then this second figure legs maybe a bit of light hitting that person's right leg so I've just not painted that in and then some shadows across the pavement and then up the wall and then just over the top a little bit perhaps this figure here has got a stripey stripy top so time now for a, a little bit more details detailed work to it defining things in a bit more detail like um, the road here so medium brush here not too wet pretty untidy line getting a bit thicker towards the foreground and then a smaller brush added a few more 
a few more lines here just to define that pavement a bit more and a few dry brush strokes on the road tire marks or imperfections in the road surface just helps maybe lead leading the eye further in guiding you around this curve of the road now for some shutters which I just picked up a bit of cerulean there typical sort of French blue for these uh, shutters could have been a cobalt turquoise as well a nice light blue bit more splattering of some clear water so those those trees in the middle that they're, they're still damp so it's been you know quite a bit of time since I went in there and it's it's just goes to show the the, the paper does retain a lot of that moisture which, which can be quite good Maybe this first figure's got some kind of a shoulder bag. There's a strap there. And make the right hand side a bit darker. Paint over any gaps that I see. few little marks on the wall to make the appearance of some mortar lines or different gaps just drawing that um, central bit before I add in a bit more just make sure it's absolutely dry now after all that splattering and so on You're done with the drawing. There needs to be a bit of shade on that extension. And then that tall tower just needed it to be darker on that front side. And 
these shadows from that tree going across the vineyard, not too much. Going over. Helps to find those sort of the ridges of the the, uh, the the lines of the vines a bit more as well. Add in some lights on that distant car, which I forgot first time round. So I quite often do this towards the end of the picture with a smaller brush, just going around all the different areas, maybe adding in little lines and dots and um, bits and pieces here and there. But still conscious, trying not to overdo it, trying to keep that fresh appearance of a watercolour. And if I think I've overdone it, I might quickly rub it out with my fingers. smudge out again if it's gone a bit too dark. Now this car might need just a few lines just to define the side of the car and just to help with a bit of the perspective, top of the wheel arch there. And rear wheel, not too much. I don't want to draw the attention of the viewer down to that area as such, it's more about the central part of the picture, maybe the tower, maybe the that distant car, sunlight hitting that windscreen. So a bumper on that car. I think we're very nearly done now. Just the final little bits and pieces. Not going to be using any white gouache for highlighting on this one. Don't think it needs it. I think we're done. So here is the finished painting with that little thumbnail image of the source photo top right corner there. So hopefully that's given you some ideas on maybe how to, if you've got a dash cam, webcam, um, have a look 
back through your images and maybe you might find something that would be suitable for a watercolour. Uh, hopefully it's given you some tips on some different watercolour techniques, composition, timings, the stages. And uh, if you want to see more of my paintings, go to my website, timwilmot.com. But I look forward to catching up with you next time. See you soon.